Welcome back to our live media day coverage of the 2012-2013 women's basketball season here on the Horizon League Network and the team that's trying to chase down the 14-year winners at the top of Green Bay preseason pick to finish number two in the league and last year's runner-up, I guess you could say, the Titans of Detroit, Autumn Rademacher. Hi. Coach in the chair, Sharita Brown. We're going to get her through this interview. She's a little bit nervous, <laughs> but she's not the first today. Coach, we'll, we'll take the pressure off her. We'll talk okay. to you for a minute. All right. Last year, oh so close in that championship game. And I think the first thing that's really important is obviously you had him right where you wanted him in the first half. Shanae Shearer goes down with the injury. How is she and is she going to factor in to this season? I think she's faking her injury right now. <laughs> she's on the court. She's uh, going up and down, doing slides and doing layups and making shots. And I look over at her and say, why is she not in here? But I know that the ACL process is, is a long yeah. one. So right now, uh, I just kind of block her out of my thoughts. We're really not sure what her status is yeah. for this year. So uh, we're just going to go from there. But she's doing all her rehab. And uh, if she doesn't play this year, then she'll she'll have two more solid years with uh, Sharita and the rest of her team. Obviously, we wanted to, we wanted to see how that team is going to set up. How has the momentum? And I know it was a, a stinging sort of loss to have the opportunity to go up there play in that game, and then when she goes down to try and fight through the momentum that happened to that. But how has the momentum from that game transferred into your off-season program to get ready for this season? Well, the thing is, it was wonderful to get to that championship game, and certainly Sine going down. We, Rita and I talked about that on the plane uh, here, that it was such a devastating time because we really thought we had them where we wanted them to, and unfortunately, we just didn't have anybody to come in and step in and make some shots as they were double, triple, even yeah. having five people on Sharita. So this year, we kind of went through our practice, and certainly we lost Jaleesa Jones and Lauren Allen, who were two kids that played 40 minutes for us. So we did a little exercise at practice and said uh, to some of the perimeters, um, what's your name? And they said their name, and I said, never heard of you. What's your name? And she said her name, mm, vaguely familiar. So the only thing in person that they really are going to remember for this year is Sharita. So what I would be doing on my off time is sitting outside on the arc shooting threes as much as possible to get themselves ready to uh, contribute this year. Well, it's great when you have a player like Sharita Brown. Time, you ready? You ready to do this? Okay. Preseason, first team, but last year, co-newcomer of the year with Kim Dennings, who somehow edges you for preseason player of the year. So my first question is, how strong of a hip check are you going to have the first time she comes down the lane? I mean, <laughs> I mean I'm not going to hit her, you know, because this year my, uh, I'm trying not to fall out. So, you know, just stay up straight. Answer. So, that's a good answer. But any motivation at all to the, uh, obviously a first team, but I think a lot of people expected you to perhaps be the preseason player of the year. She edged you by the narrowest of margins, I was told. Any added motivation to go out there and prove yourself this year coming off a brilliant freshman campaign? Yeah, I mean, it motivates me to get my team pumped, you know, get ready for this season, you know, try to win it all this year and not come up short. So. What was the off season like for you? What did you try to do to make yourself better? Get in better shape. You said that pretty quickly and with a smile on your face. How's that, how's that been going? It's been going good. Yeah. Get, and work on my shot. Yeah. So not only defending me in the post, but also be able to get out there and shoot the intermediate shot or whatnot. Same sort of question I had for your coach. So you went up there, you lose a heartbreaking Horizon League championship game, but you had gone to Green Bay. You ended the undefeated regular season on their home floor in convincing fashion last season. It was the talk of the league for a while. You know that you can hang with the big teams in this league. Is this the year that you guys take that, that next step? Yes, we can. This is the year. We just got to stay motivated. Once someone go down, we need to just pick everybody up and not go down with that person and just keep fighting. Okay. On the opposite sideline, there's a familiar face back up the road at Green Bay, someone that you know quite well from your time as an assistant. What's it like having Coach Borseth back in the league? It's very odd. I would say that's very odd to have him back up there. Uh, I, I'm excited. I mean, I know exactly what he's going to do. I know how he is. Um, so he's going to have that transition. I'm hoping uh, to getting some new players because all of his players uh, have gone through the system. But just having him there and knowing um, it is an advantage for Green Bay because the city of Green Bay, I, they never forgot about him. He's the mayor. He, he, everybody knows him, and they're all out to support him. So, and, and it's a lot of love up there for him. So they will come out, and they'll be charged up. And certainly there's some rivalry there uh, between him and I. We faced each other at Michigan. Uh, he's gotten us twice. We got him at their place, uh, I believe it was a couple of years ago. So 
Um, it's familiar. It's going to be one of those Hello Newman type <laughs> Seinfeld moments when we see one another. But uh, as much as we get along, we both want, would love to uh, beat each other by 50. Just 50? Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, we're taking a look at some highlights from last year's performance. And, Coach, you mentioned that the replacement of what you've lost on the perimeter with <laughs> Lauren Allen and Jaleesa Jones graduating, the uncertainty with Sine's knee injury. With what Sharita brings in the post, and let's not leave out a, a great senior in Yarshayak and what she's been able to do for this program over the last couple of years, does this team try and approach things any differently from last year based off of the personnel and what you have to work with? Well, you know, I said it's a very simple game, and I've been spying on all the coaches out there on the laptops and what they've been saying, and it seems like every team in the league is going to get up and down and transition. They want to play very fast. They want to, uh, you know, break Olympic sprinting records, and, I, and I'm going completely opposite. I'm saying we need to slow that, slow the ball down uh, in a lot of spots and get the ball inside. So I said, really, for us, it's a simple game. I mean, we need to defend, we need to rebound, we need to get the ball inside, and then we need to make shots when it comes out of there. So, I mean, that's whether it's against a man or a zone, that's what we're going to see. And certainly you mentioned Yar Shayak. Uh, she was somebody that had to go through a few adjustments mm -hmm. as far as um, – you know, working with Sharita, that used to be Yar's kind of area, and Sharita invaded it a little bit. Uh, but once they got on the same team and were allies, uh, that's when we really started to click as a team. So, I, I, like I said, I'm just encouraging our new kids to get in there. Hopefully we've done a good job recruiting of uh, being able to have some kids that can t put the ball in the basket when they're wide open. You're the first one to say you're going to slow it down. I like it. It's, <laughs> it's the curveball now to the, the, the straight fastball answer we've had all day. Okay, so you'd like to hear that. You're not going to be going up and down right. and up and down and running as much because right. they want to feed it to you in the post a little bit. What do you think this team's number one focus has been and needs to be at this point as you're in the first week of practice? Um, our number one focus uh, is defense. Working the ball around, um, like getting in help side, make sure we're in help on time. Our second focus is uh, getting the ball in the post, just like Coach Ross said. <laughs> getting the ball in the post once they double, uh, pitch it out, yeah. being, able to, being able to hit down a uh, shot. You, you could be a wide receiver in football. You know, you're always open, right? Yeah. You're all, <laughs> always open, right? Get it, yeah. get it down low. How, have, how has the process been from a freshman that came in and had as much success as you did, but still sort of learning you know, how to fit in with a college team, the mm -hmm. demands of not just your coach, but now a conditioning program, all this other stuff. How have you grown into what your responsibilities are now that you're going to have some newcomers that are going to come in and try and, and learn with like you did last year? How is that different as you approach your second season of college basketball? Um, I mean, it's really not that different. I mean, it's basically the same. I mean, I just got to help like others, like try to like the freshmen. I just got to, like, be a leader, basically, and, like, help them out, tell them what to do and, like, how things are going to go and stuff like that. Well, we're going to circle the date for Green Bay on the calendar a couple of times this year. But before we get to that conference schedule, we'll take a look at the non-conference schedule for the Titans this year and how Coach Rademacher's team is going to test themselves in the early going. There you see the uh, Thanksgiving tournament you guys will be playing in with Penn State and then at Michigan to kind of kick things off there on November the 9th, a couple of other trips in there to test this team early on. Coach, what are you looking to establish there in the first two months of that schedule? Well, you know what? We talked about last year. We, we had a rough start. We started on the preseason WNIT. We went 0-6. I thought at that point, oof, this is, this is not going to go very well. Uh, so we started out 1-8 and eight and thought some of it was maybe the scheduling issue, scheduling a lot of tough teams, thinking that we would be able to compete. Um, but at that point in time, it really did kind of hurt our confidence a little bit until we turned things around in December. So we're thinking that maybe this non-conference schedule uh, can get us in a position where there's balance between heavy hitters and, and, and people that we should be able to compete and then certainly teams that we should be able to take care of as long as we um, you know, go out and play hard every possession. So I think that uh, this non-conference schedule allows us uh, the room to uh, be successful and have momentum going into uh, the conference as well as challenge us in certain spots. So I'm interested to see. We do have a lot of experience, like I said, with Yara with five years uh, experience. Megan Hatter is now back after uh -huh. a shoulder injury and certainly uh, Sharita's performance and then a couple of newcomers that really worked hard over the summer. So I'm interested to see how we do. All right, well, I'll get you out with this question. So last year at this very time, your team was picked to finish seventh in the Horizon League. You ended up silencing the critics, finished second. We had one first place vote a year ago. 
And I know some of the coaches cast some <laughs> votes in that. This year you get two first place votes, but now maybe a little bit of a target on your back. Where do you see this program and what you wanted to see it grow to at this stage? Well, you know what? I voted for us last year because <laughs> they said it I could. It was implied. It was just so, implied. <laughs> I just feel like if you don't think your team's going to end up number one, why are, you, why are you coaching? So I guess next year everyone will have a first place vote. But anyway, uh, yeah, it was, it was nice to see that somebody did uh, select us number one. Maybe that was PJRSID. Uh, so, but anyway, having that number two preseason, uh, it, it's a compliment. I know there's a lot of basketball to be played. Uh, we fell into this two years ago when we had a very good uh, second year when we went 14-4 and four with Bridget Mulroy in her class, and then the year after uh, we dropped off. So I, I want to make sure that we get rid of that pattern of having a great year and a down year and a great year and a down year. So at this point in time, you know, we're not really worried about all those preseason things, uh, even though I think, you know, Sharita was a little down, I think, about the player <laughs> of the year. No? Yeah? Yeah. Okay, yeah, a little bit. A little bit. That, so, yeah. you know, we're not going to put a whole lot of weight into that, but it is always nice to have uh, a little bit of respect out there. Individual and team goals to shoot for. There's motivation in Detroit this year. I can sense it. Thank you so much for your time, Coach Autumn Rydermacher, Sharita Brown. Sharita Brown's out for it. I'm telling you, watch <laughs> out. Watch <laughs> out, Kim <laughs> Demings. Watch <laughs> out. Do not come into the lane. I'm telling you right now. Thank you so much for your time. Best of luck this season. Thank you. Youngstown State in the chair next as we roll on with Media Day.